Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Chipino Seafood Stew. Well, here we are staring down the end of yet another year with plenty to reflect on, plenty to look forward to, and even more to be grateful for, including the fact that because of you guys out there, this channel now has more than a half million subscribers, which blows my mind. So from myself and everyone here at ATBBQ, Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching. Now, today we're gonna make a celebratory dish, cipino. And cipino, if you're not familiar, is an Italian style, tomato rich, catch of the day seafood stew that originated in San Francisco, which makes sense because right there on the bay, all the bounty of the Pacific Ocean. But even for myself, a Midwest boy here in landlocked Kansas, just a little bit of effort. You can find everything you need to make a cipino just about anywhere. Now this is all things barbecue, so we're not gonna be standing in front of a stove stirring a pot of stew today. We're gonna cook it outside on the grill and incorporate some grilled elements to really elevate the dish, including charred fresh tomatoes, a cedar planked cod, and even a sourdough garlic bread crouton. It's gonna soak up all the juices from this delicious stew. But before we can get to any of that, we gotta fire up the grill. Now today we're cooking on the Napoleon Phantom 500, which is a gas grill. And we will be using the gas for the side burner when we're simmering our stew. But most of the magic's gonna happen over charcoal right here inside the main cooking chamber. So once we've got our charcoal basket loaded up with some lump, we'll turn on the burners over high. And then we're just gonna let those go until this charcoal gets going and can kind of sustain itself, then we can turn the gas off completely. Now, one of the first things we're gonna do here is get together the garlic butter for our crouton. And I might as well go ahead and get this sourdough bowl cubed up so that it's ready for the garlic butter when the garlic butter is done. So I'm gonna take about a pound of bread here and I'm gonna cut it into big chunks, like one inch cubes. Nice big pieces that'll soak up the garlic butter and then hold their shape a bit when they're actually smothered in this stew. Now for the garlic butter itself, four simple ingredients, doing a half cup of unsalted butter, one half cup of Sicilian extra virgin olive oil. Then we're gonna do about one tablespoon of our cattleman's Italiano seasoning and then six cloves of garlic, just crushed and peeled. So we'll slide the garlic butter on the side burner over medium heat. Inside the cooking chamber, you can see our charcoal is taking. So we're gonna shut the gas off. I'm gonna slide a grate over the charcoal so we can char up our tomatoes. So right now we're basically just trying to warm everything up so we can incorporate it all. We're gonna cook the garlic just a little bit and then we'll actually blend it just to get the garlic entirely throughout the butter and oil. So garlic butter's been going for about five minutes now. You can see it's frothed up. I'm trying to find a couple cloves of garlic in here to show you. So you can see how those are just lightly golden brown. That's what we're going for. We we'll pop this off and put it right into our blender pitcher. So we're gonna pop this onto the Vitamix. Let's start it on low. Then crank it up. We're looking to mostly break down that crushed garlic. Work it right into all that butter and oil. So once that's broken down, come right out of here and over our sourdough. But let's just turn this around and make sure we get a little bit of that garlic butter on every piece. And then we're gonna spread it out on a sheet pan. Now this is ready to go 
on the grill when the grill is ready for the croutons. So we're back checking on our tomatoes, which are starting to get some char on them. And that's really what we're looking for. We want them blackened on the surface. Over here to the right, we'll go ahead and slide on our croutons over indirect heat. That is to say that the gas is not on underneath these. Any heat that's going to come over here to toast these croutons is coming off the charcoal and over the top. So now we've got a little bit of time to do some knife work for our veggies and aromatics for the stew. So we're going to start with a couple of leeks here. We're on, only going to be using the white parts. The greens can always be saved to go into any sort of stock you're making. Leeks are really nice for that. But these tend to be a bit dirty on the inside. As you can see right here, some dirt and some mud in there. So we're going to do these first because we want to get them split down, diced up, and then soaking in some water to get them clean. You can rinse these under running water, but honestly, this is my favorite way to clean leeks because the leeks tend to float and all of the dirt tends to sink to the bottom. So you can pluck the clean leeks right off the top after they've soaked for a bit. Next, we've got a red onion. So while the leeks are gonna give us a nice kind of mild and uh, sweet onion flavor, the red onion's gonna have a little bit more bite to it. And we'll just dice these down into a like small to medium dice. Now I've just pulled off our tomatoes. You can see really nicely charred. I'll let those cool off just a little bit before we process them. Now back to the knife work. We've got some fennel here, a fresh fennel bulb. We're gonna dice up this bottom part. We're gonna save these fronds for garnish for our soup. Much like an onion, we're gonna cut that right through the core, but then we're gonna take that core out. have these and slice them as well. These fennel fronds make a great garnish. I'm just gonna pick them off of their thicker stems. And next we've got some celery. We're gonna dice this down pretty small like the onions. Yeah, just about a half cup, maybe a little bit more will be plenty. Next, we've got a couple cloves of garlic peeled, and we're just going to slice these thin. So next, we're going to put together a little bouquet garni, which is just uh, a number of herbs tied together that we can fish out later. So we'll start with some parsley stems, because there's tons of flavor in those, and they don't get used very often otherwise. We've got a bay leaf. We're going to do just a little bit of rosemary and some fresh thyme, and then we'll tie this all up with butcher's twine. All right, so that shall hold together now. You can leave that extra string on there just to help you fish it out later. So now that we've got the knife work done, we're gonna process these tomatoes. We're gonna take our charred fresh tomatoes, throw them in the blender. We don't need to rinse that out. It does not hurt that there's some butter and some garlic in here. And then I'm gonna add to that a full can, which is about three cups of San Marzano whole tomatoes. So we'll break this down, and now all of these wonderful, like, smoky charred bits are going to be worked through the entire tomato sauce. All right, so that is that. Let's set this aside. Now we'll head back to the grill. We want to check on our croutons and start cooking down the veggies for our stew. The croutons have been on for about 20 to 25 minutes now. I've spun them about 10 minutes ago because this right side, these are getting really nice and crunchy. The left side needs a little bit more love, so we'll let those ride for now. So we're set up with our Dutch oven on the side burner. We wanna add a few tablespoons of olive oil, and then we're gonna come in with our leeks, get our fennel, red onion, all about the same quantities on those three, about a cup and a half, two cups each, and then that half cup of celery. We we'll season it up with a couple tablespoons of Italiano, and we'll start to sweat these down. So 
So croutons are looking good now. Got a good crunch to them. It's about 30 minutes total cook time, uh, right around 500 degrees. Those are ready to come off. Now back over the charcoal here, plenty of heat still coming off of here, even though this is burned down. I'm gonna put a few chunks of cherry wood in here and let that ignite. And then I've got a plank of cedar wood that's been soaking in water for a good hour or two now. And we're gonna cook some codfish right here on this cedar. But before we do that, I'm just gonna try and get a little char on here. It's gonna start to dry it out a bit, which is okay. That's why we soak it so that it won't just light on fire immediately. But by getting some char on the bottom, we can flip it over, put our fish on top and get some of that cedar smoke. All right, so check this out. We've got the black on the surface, the char. That's what we're looking for. At this point, I'm gonna slide this away from that fire. And we'll load this up with our cod here in a little bit. For now, we need to get back to our veggies and see how we've really sweat these down. We're gonna deglaze here in just a moment. But before we do that, we're gonna get our garlic in and let that cook for about 30 seconds. And we've got some of this, uh, this goodness kind of cooked onto the bottom here. So we'll deglaze that here with about a half cup each of clam juice and about a half cup of white wine. That's gonna loosen up everything that's stuck and allow all of that flavor to work its way into the stew. We'll let this reduce down a bit and then once it's almost gone, or what we call a sec, we're gonna add in our tomato and our seafood stock. So you see here how almost all that liquid is gone from the bottom and that enamel is looking clean now. So we're ready to add our tomato. We'll throw in the bouquet garni and our seafood stock. So we'll start with about a quart and a half. We can always add a little more later if we need to. But we want all of this to really infuse now. So we're gonna let this simmer away for about 20 minutes and in the meantime, we'll prepare the cod. All right, so we're gonna just prepare the cod right here on the cedar plank. I'll hit this with just a little bit of oil first. I've got one pound of cod fillets. These are cut down into six individual pieces. Uh, nice small serving so that you can set one right on top of each bowl of the stew for presentation. And then we're gonna hit these also with that Italiano seasoning. I'm gonna throw a few more chunks of wood on here just for some smoke and some flame. We'll slide this back over the top. And then we can kind of play this by ear. So we wanna get some flame on here. So we have some char, we have some smoke. Uh, but if we get to the point where we're drying out our plank and it's gonna catch on fire, no problem, a little water on top of it move it to indirect heat to finish. So we're getting to the point now where the cedar actually wants to catch fire. So we're gonna move away from that direct flame. But look at that, already creating some great smoke from the flame that's touched the cedar. And then we've got the cherry down here in the coals. Those will continue to burn. We'll let these cook indirect until firm or 140 internal temperature. And that's gonna take a little while, which is perfect because we still have our stew simmering over here. And like I said, we wanna give this enough time for this bouquet garni to really do some work in the stew. And the seafood that we add at the end is really not gonna to take too long, about 10 minutes to finish cooking. Now, as far as seafood selection goes, the best seafood to use in your chipino is whatever's fresh and available. So a firm white fish like cod or halibut, uh, anything like clams, mussels, scallops, uh, shrimp, lobster, crab, any of these are great choices. And we've selected a few of these for our stew today. So we'll start off with some mussels, about a pound, and about a pound of shrimp as well. That's just peeled, deveined, tails off, ready to eat. And each of those are gonna take probably about 10 minutes to cook through. These mussel shells will pop open, the shrimp will get opaque, in color. And then we've got some Dungeness crab pieces. 
Um, obviously a great choice for a San Francisco stew as this is a, a popular product on the Pacific. And then on top of that, we're gonna throw in some claw meat. Now these were just what was most available for us today. But like I said, there's all kinds of possibilities. Your crab is fully cooked, so you don't have to worry about that. We're really just warming it through as the mussels and shrimp cook. We've popped our cod back over the charcoal to soak up some more heat. We'll check internal temperature here because we're getting close. Yeah, we're creeping up on 135, so this is only gonna take a few more minutes, which means I'm gonna slide this back off to the side. We'll let that finish off over here while our stew finishes on the side burner. All right guys, we are, we are there. We're checking out our mussels here. You can see popped open, fully cooked. Let's find some shrimp, opaque and firm. We're ready to serve it up. So we're gonna start by putting some of our sourdough garlic bread croutons right in the bottom where they can soak up all that stewy goodness. Come right over the top with the stew. And make sure that we get just a little bit of everything. Muscle, plenty of shrimp in there. Pick out a crab leg or two. And then each one of these will get a piece of cod right on top. Finish it off with some fennel fronds. Some Parmesan over the top for good measure. All right, I'm gonna get a taste here. I'm gonna dig out one of these mussels. Got some of that broth, some crab, a little bit of cod. Oh man, so I'm immediately hit with the smokiness from the cedar, which is delicious and a bit unique in a chipino, but man, really lovely. I gotta get some of this crouton too, before it completely loses its crunch. It's soaking up all that goodness in there. Man, garlicky, sourdough is fantastic. And then the broth itself, the charred bits of tomato add so much depth, that smokiness. Just really rich. I think the clam juice helps out quite a bit. It adds some of that extra oomph to that seafood stock. So many things going on in here, but what a lovely bite. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, if there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.